Welcome to our presentation. My name is Özgür Özkan. I am an embedded design engineer and working for Archelik. I am going to make this presentation with Cameron and Sandeep from R. We will focus on two main subjects, which are energy efficiency and food waste. I will make an introduction to describe the current situation and the near future. We will look at possible ways to get better energy efficient refrigerators and their costs. And then we will talk about how an AI solution can improve our possibilities. Let's get started. In the EU, refrigerators are the second biggest consumer in houses, and those refrigerators consume 57 billion kilowatt hour per year. It stands for it stands for 13% of total usage of a house. Currently in the EU, most of refrigerators have A++ label. Average consumption of each refrigerator is 221 kilowatt hour per year. Energy regulation changed in 2021. Current A+ and A++ refrigerators may be labeled as F and G, according to new regulation. In 2021, uh, even having C label will become not easy with new energy regulation. Additionally, if you look again at 2021, we can see the share of F label and how it takes a big part in general picture. In 10 years, A-class refrigerators, according to new regulation, will get the same percentage as today's A++ refrigerators. And the difference will be impressive. Total saving will be 10 billion kilowatt hour per year. And let's look at what 10 billion kilowatt hour saving means. It means a lot. It's equal to 81 small coal powered plant production. It means over 5 million tons of coal will not be used. And 3 million uh, tons of carbon dioxide will not be emitted to the world. So right now we know how important to reduce power, even on a specific white goods. And we saw, uh, we saw the expectations about refrigerator energy labels in the future. Let's talk about possible ways to reduce power. Energy price and refrigerator energy consumptions were high in the past. Then both gradually dropped every year so far. Right now, we have a saturation level. And energy reduction will not be easy and cheap, as well as the past. Uh, it will become difficult to get energy reduction without a significant price increase. There are some techniques uh, that could be used to get uh, energy efficient refrigerators, such as vacuum insulation panel or uh, compressor improvements. By the way, all these traditional energy saving methods will be difficult to achieve net zero carbon gain. Also, none of them are cheap or easy applicable. For example, by using vacuum insulation panel, 10% energy reduction costs more than 30% increase of product retail price. And it, for sure, makes hard to reach better energy efficient refrigerators for common use, because this will be expensive. On that point, we started to search for another way to reduce power, something which wouldn't increase product price, something which was easy to use and reliable and something totally algorithmic. Was it possible? This was the first question. Another main point related to refrigerators is food storage. We all want to keep our food fresh as long as possible, right? Actually, our refrigerators are doing a great job. They are using different techniques, different cooling systems for uh, better uh, storage conditions. The question is, can we do something better? Is it possible to get longer shelf life? When we look at food waste numbers, numbers say that this is also a really important subject. In the EU, every year, 50 million tons of food is wasted. It costs almost $100 billion. At the same time, 33 million of people can't afford decent meal every day. Also, we emit 4 billion tons of greenhouse gas for manufacturing those food. So, what could we do about that? Again, without increasing product price, could we reduce food waste as manufacturers? This was the second question. In fresh food cabin of an average refrigerator, temperature oscillates. This uh, oscillation is not too much, and generally it's limited in plus minus 0 0.5 Celsius. If you manage to decrease this oscillation to plus minus 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, would it affect our food? The answer is yes. Less oscillation can decrease food waste. Approximately 10% longer shelf life is possible just doing better temperature control. At this point, I, uh, I would like to give the word to Cameron. Thank you so much for listening to me. I'm Cameron LaFollette, part of the Kyle team here at ARM. 
Throughout the presentation, you may hear me say RL, which is just an abbreviation for reinforcement learning. Every refrigeration system has four parts. The refrigerant is pressurized by the compressor and sheds heat in the condenser that then passes through the metering device, which is a bottleneck that creates a low pressure side of the system. The refrigerant is now able to absorb heat in the evaporator and return to the compressor. Our system has a variable speed compressor, which the agent controls. The faster the speed, the greater the pressure drops across the metering device and the colder the refrigerant gets, however, at the expense of greater power consumption. Our goal is to see if we can't outperform the PID shown in the picture here with the reinforcement learning agent. Traditional machine learning applications such as classifiers use a large data set with known definitive answers to train and validate the policy of a neural network. How RL differs is that the agent networks are placed into the environment it is to learn about and it develops a policy via trial and error of learning. An RL agent consists of two parts, an actor, which periodically takes observations from the plant and attempts to maximize the long-term reward, and a critic, which calculates an expectation of the long-term reward from the actor's actions. This expectation later informs the actor's decisions. This observe, decide, act loop, also called a step, occurs once every sample period, which you may hear me refer to as TS. The reward, or in our case, penalty, is calculated by the measurements from the environment. Ours is the sum of the scaled power consumption and the scaled thermal error, or the distance the air temperature is from the set point on the thermostat. Our results. There's a great amount of value in watching your agent train. I've heard reinforcement learning described as a dark art requiring a degree of intuition when making decisions on hyperparameters, noise, rewards, and so forth. Taking the time to observe many episodes helps me to get a feel for how these played together and affected the agent's convergence. The red on top is the cumulative power consumption over time. The green on bottom is a simulation of a door opening and closing at randomized times and durations. In the first image from a very early episode, the agent is still learning the system, but has already made progress indicated to me by the air temperature in blue, crossing the dark red set point multiple times. The second is at episode 80, where I tend to see a sharp increase in performance. The crossings have become mostly touches now. You can see additional artifacts at the beginning of the yellow compressor signal. The final episode, from 496 hasn't yet reached convergence. Yet you can see the temperature tracking is happening. In the beginning, there is a sharp temperature spike from the refrigeration system achieving steady operating pressures. Looking closely, you can see that the agent has learned that keeping the compressor low saves power while building these pressures. This curve shows the agent's convergence. When the rewards plateau, we know that we have reached a solution. This is further evidenced by the expected reward in yellow matching the episode reward in blue. The test conditions were identical for both the PID and the RL agent for an apples to apples comparison. The duration was one hour with a 270 degree Kelvin set point, a 296 degree Kelvin ambient temperature, and a door opening at 1,000 seconds and closing at 1,100 seconds. Looking at the power shows that we have achieved a 3% savings, which could likely be improved even further with further training efforts. And now I'm going to hand it over to Sandeep to talk about deployment. Hello, all. Welcome to the last part of this presentation. My name is Sandeep Singh. I'm a senior application engineer and work on ARM ML software stack for the partner enablement. In this last part, I would cover some of the strategies what we plan to deploy this RL agent into the real hardware. Let's get started. With the latest available release of the MATLAB 2020.2021.b, we cannot directly convert our whole RL agent into a model. So we thought of some of the strategies what we can do. The first thing we can do is to convert our actor from the RL agent via the MATLAB coder 
into the ONX format, which as you all know is open neural network exchange format and is best suited for working multiple across framework environments. Once we have our actor freezed into an ONX model, we can convert from the ONX model into a TensorFlow format model. And we can then deploy the TensorFlow model into the Cortex-M, either by quantizing it to end date and then deploying it on Cortex-M, or we can thought of some other alternatives like converting the model directly from the MATLAB into a C code and then deploying the C code into the hardware directly. In future, we can also think of some of the things like Simsys NN, which is a standalone ML library to work with Cortex-M processor or AI accelerators like Ethos U to work alongside of Cortex-M to increase the ML inference. In this uh, slide, I would like to show you how we can, how we can say that the Cortex-M is still one of the most uh, precise choice for running these kind of RL deployments. Uh, I have the, my actor neural network here and I try to manually calculate the number of Macs and the flops are two times of a Mac multiply and addition. So we calculated the total number of flops in my neural network. And then I try to show how these uh, uh, number of flops going to execute on the Cortex M4 and on Cortex M55. Cortex M4 executes uh, one F32 Mac for every three cycles. So precisely the total number of, uh, it would take around 105 microseconds to uh, execute the total number of flops in this actor. If we consider for Cortex M55, which can execute two F32 Mac per cycle, it would take around 10 microseconds uh, to execute this actor. So this shows how easy it would be to deploy such RL agent into the real uh, Cortex M processors into the real hardware. Now I'll discuss some of the results which are from the real hardware prototyping done by our partner ArcLake into this project. And these are the results actually from the ArcLake to deploy on the real hardware. The slide shows us the freezer results. On the left hand side, the algorithms make compressor work and keep the evaporator in balance. The red, line, the red line here is the evaporator temperature and the blue one is the compressor working frequency. On the right hand side, you can see the fan and the air temperature results. The yellow line is the fan and the gray one is air temperature. As you can see in the air temperature, the oscillation is almost zero. In conclusion, in the freezer mode, we can have a better temperature oscillation and 1% energy saving. Let me add something here. With an AI algorithm, compressor works more, but with less RPM, less rotation. It makes the condenser six, seven uh, Celsius hotter than the current algorithm. The hotter condenser has a negative effect on the energy saving. If some uh, simple condenser changes are done, this will be likely the most effective way is a real good solution for doing the energy saving. On this page, we can see the fresh food results. On the left graph, the blue line is the compressor working frequency and the red is the evaporator temperature. On the right hand side, the yellow one is a fan frequency and the gray one is air temperature inside the cabin. Oscillation is a plus minus zero to one uh, degree Celsius and it is showing a total saving of 25%. In the market, two cabin refrigerator are commonly used. One cabin is for the freezer and the other one is for the fresh food. Fresh food cabins are generally two, three times bigger than the freezer cabins, as we can see in all our refrigerators, most of our refrigerators. After getting one cabin results, we may say that approximately these results heads us to around 10% efficiency, common type two cabin refrigerators. So in conclusion, we can say that without any additional cost, any additional bomb cost, this product can, having this RL deployed on a real hardware can meet the new EU regulations, uh, A and B class with, with additional energy savings. The reinforcement learning is an idle, uh, idle ML algo to be running on the Cortex M based processor deployed on the real hardware. For the sustainability point of view, the RL as we shown uh, can reduce the energy consumption and can be 
with the further environment such as the interior fan and defrost loads, uh, we can further uh, make it more precise and more beneficial for the energy saving perspective. The 10%, it also can have a power reduction, a 10% appliance power reduction in a net zero carbon solution. So overall, uh, with respect to energy solution, with respect to sustainability, this can be a potential solution for all of uh, deploying in the refrigerator and all such energy, wherever the energy savings are essential. That would be end of my presentation. Feel free to uh, ask me any questions to Cameron who presented most part of the presentation or reach out to me for anything. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good day.